phone from Ireland. The company's website is goldcore.com. Mark, welcome to True News. Thanks for having me on, Rick. It's Monday, and all these stories out uh, today about a major change coming in the global financial system, and at the center of it is gold. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I wasn't aware. I switched off the last day or two days because I was just busy with family and that, you know, and I made the weekend sacrosanct. And so those stories that you, you've alluded to there, they're, they're hugely important. And, and I suppose there, there are more pieces in the jigsaw puzzle, which is increasingly suggesting that we are uh, approaching what many of us suspected would happen for a long time, that there would be problems in the international monetary system and there would be uh, problems uh, regarding the dollar. Um, and, yeah, it, it all comes back to gold ultimately because, you know, gold has been at the cornerstone of our monetary systems for, for centuries, and it's only in recent years that it was demonetized. Um, but it looks like we are heading back to some form of quasi-gold standard in the coming months and years, and, and all the signs are pointing that direction now. What are you hearing in Ireland about the fate of the U.S. dollar? Well, it's funny, Ireland, uh, I mean, you spoke about the, the media and uh, your, your show True News is, a, is, is an antidote and, 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 you know, you're given the alternative news uh, and it's similar here in Ireland. Uh, I think a lot of people are uh, lulled into a false sense of security. There's a lot of complacency uh, that the, the, the entire uh, media uh, establishment and the, 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 the quasi-propaganda is basically suggesting people everything will be fine, we're in a recovery, uh, trust in our politicians, trust in ECB trust in uh, our, our great leaders, you know, and there's only a minority of people who see beyond that, and I suppose they have a instinctually just they just know that there is something not wrong, and then there's other people who have a sort of deeper awareness uh, of what's going on uh, on different levels, uh, and, and, and sometimes they have an understanding from a historical perspective, uh, and they realise that. Uh, Everything is not as kosher as being suggested. Uh, in terms of the dollar, yeah, and, and that means it's funny. We're, we're quite, uh, I think, Irish people uh, and the Irish media is very much, uh, because we are uh, very dependent on the U.S., we are we have a huge amount of multinational and, and a huge American corporations are based here in Ireland, including uh, very large U.S. tech firms are, are based here in Ireland. So we get a lot of investment in Ireland. We have a lot of immigrants uh, who have uh, emigrated to uh, the, the U.S., uh, and we really that our economy is extremely dependent on the U.S. economy. So I think there is a lot of wishful thinking. There is a, a complete failure to look at the the, 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 so the the fundamentals of the U.S. economy in terms of the uh, the 17 trillion national debt and the, between you know different estimates between 50 to 100 to 200 trillion uh, unfunded liabilities. Uh, and there's very few people. I mean, we're one of the few people uh, uh, companies and indeed uh, people who ask questions about it and say, listen, these are real, real risks. You need to be aware of these risks and you need to take action to protect yourselves and your families. So. So uh, it's probably similar to America. There's a minority of people who are aware, but the vast majority of people, uh, they, they just trust. Uh, I suppose that they, they've, the, 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 the whole propaganda recently is about this Keynesian propaganda that, you know, we need to print money. If we keep printing money uh, and we kick the can down the road, it will all be fine. But, I mean, anybody who knows anything about monetary history and economic history knows that uh, it's, that is not a recipe for a sound, sound economy in the medium and long term. And ultimately, it tends to lead to some form of monetary disaster. All right, so Ireland has so much riding on the U.S. dollar and U.S. economy that most of the people, including your leaders in the, in the news media, simply putting the blinders on their eyes, saying, I, we don't want to look at what's going on with the U.S. dollar. I think that's exactly it. it it's, it's a form of denial, you know, and uh, people are putting their heads in the sand and it's a similar thing to our property market here. I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware, your list was aware, but we had a huge property bubble. Uh, there was a few of us back in early 2000s who were warning about this property bubble, and we were just completely shut out of the media, you know, and we were dismissed as doom and gloom merchants and uh, and, 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 and conspiracy theorists and, 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 and the usual uh, sort of pejorative thing that goes on whereby people are called names rather than looking at the substantive points that people are making. You know, let's look at the actual research. Let's look at the evidence uh, rather than engaging in, in 
in, in, in child, childish name calling, you know, but that's exactly what happened. The people were, were sidelined and dismissed. People who said, listen, we have a serious property bubble developing here. So suddenly the property bubble burst and, and property prices fell between 50% in Dublin and, and 60, 70, 80% outside of Dublin in, in, in the countryside, you know. There's been a bit of recovery in the last year or two years, and uh, I, I think there's actually a, a mini bubble developing again, particularly in Dublin, because prices have gone up something like 25, 30% in six months, 12 months, you know. So, but it's, it's just complacency, I, I think, on every level, because Ireland is a tiny little economy of, you know, 4.5 4. million people, and uh, it doesn't really matter. People say, oh, well, Irish property is sound because the supply and demand, but ultimately it's what happens in New York, what happens in Washington, what happens in London, what happens in Frankfurt. Uh, these are ultimately what impacts in Ireland, and, uh, but, but people are just, as I said, they're just this huge, this huge level of denial uh, and just, I suppose, wishful thinking, because I suppose ultimately we realise we are, on some level, I think we realise we're in, 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 in deep doo-doo, given the, the huge debt levels that are the, the, the sovereign state has, and, and also the individual individual level there's a huge amount of mortgage debt in particular in the country and I think it's just a huge amount of wishful thinking and I think people also think that right well if we all believe in this uh, hopefully it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy and, 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 and all uh, boats will rise but unfortunately when you look at history that does not tend to be the case you know and you, you do need to be you know you don't want to be pessimistic you don't want to be uh, but you don't you don't want to be uh, overly, overly optimistic you just you need to be realistic but uh, I suppose uh, be p- positively realistic you know and and look at the problems. It's only by looking at the problems that you can realize that there are real solutions as well. Mark, why are the Russian and central banks buying massive amounts of gold? Yeah, well, I I suppose they see the writing on the wall. These are insiders, and and uh, the majority of them would would be, uh, you know, very astute uh, uh, bankers employed by central banks, you know, and and their duty is to protect the... uh, uh, the nation state, the sovereign state, uh, and gold has um, uh, uh, historically gold was the form of money, you know. And, and then, obviously, since 1913, the, the Federal Reserve came about, uh, and then 1933, Roosevelt went off the the gold standards, uh, and, and, and 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 you guys uh, began to uh, experiment with fiat currency, and that continued up until with, with Bretton Woods up until 1971 with President Nixon, when he completely went off the gold standard and the dollar. Became you know a complete fiat currency that wasn't backed by anything, but before that, for hundreds of years, gold was money, and that's why central banks had huge amounts of gold. Uh, the gold actually backed the currency, and then in more recent years, um, or sorry, the gold was the currency, and people used gold in day-to-day commerce, and it would be twenty-dollar pieces that that you guys used in in the eighteenth and nineteenth century, um, and and then it became a form of backing of the currency. So. Uh, yeah, but that, that uh, I suppose, in, in the, uh, after 1971, but more particularly, I think, in the, uh, since early 1990s and the 1990s, obviously, the end of the Cold War, uh, there was a belief in globalization. There was a growing belief in free trade, and everybody believed we were going to have uh, prosperity in the world through economic growth because, you know, the end of communism, the end of the, the evil empire, the Soviet Union, uh, and, and, and the versions of China and Russia embracing capitalism, there was a belief that this was going to uh, create huge economic growth, uh, and therefore gold may be less necessary in the monetary system. And th- with that came then the, the European Union and the uh, European Monetary Union and the ECB, and Indeed, there's a huge amount of faith in, 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 in that European project and in this new fiat currency, which is the euro, which, again, was uh, not, not backed uh, by gold, even though the member states, including the, the Bundesbank and, and, and the Bank of France and Bank of Italy, have huge, huge gold reserves and still have and haven't sold them. But, but given, given that sort of context, and also, I suppose, Bill Clinton was in power, it was the end of the Cold War, there was a lot more geopolitical stability in the world. It was, uh, up until September 11, 2001, it was a time of, of great uh, stability and economic growth and political stability. So central bankers were, were there was actually a lot of selling of gold into the marketplace. Um, then that only began to change in, uh, I think it was 2000 and, I think it was 2007, uh, 2006 or 2007, for the first time central banks became net buyers of gold for the first time in 20 or 30 years. And that's because of the, obviously, the, the beginnings of the global debt crisis that, that, that began in the U.S. with the subprime, subprime crisis over there. Uh, and since then, central banks have been net buyers every single year since then. And I suppose the bottom line is because the amount of money that's in the world today is just astronomical. And people, uh, you know, we talk, we used to talk about millions and, and, and billions. 
and how it's trillions uh, and indeed quadrillions that the bank of uh, not the bank of japan that the J- japanese government uh, the national debt over there has gone over one quadrillion yen you know so there's huge amounts of money uh, swooshing around the world in in the casino that has become our global financial monetary system and they're just uh, the they're just of- digits there's no, really there's no money it's just digits in a computer Exactly, exactly. It's not, it's, it's not even paper. The majority of it, you're dead right, the majority of it is it's electronic, it's electronic money, you know, and, and these guys can just go on a computer and they can press control P and they can print billions and trillions, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and that's what's happening. It's, and and, it's, and people don't understand that and they don't understand the ramifications of that, you know, but the central bankers do realize it and that's why they're beginning to buy again and, uh, and that's why it's, uh, we believe it's very much we're in the nascent stages of central banks buying. They've just been sort of very very gradually buying small amounts, small amounts because they don't want to rock the boat. But at some stage, we believe you'll see a rush to gold, particularly from the central banks, uh, and that's when you'll see fireworks in the gold market and uh, the potential default that many of us have been talking about for a few years. Do you think that this, whatever new monetary system arises in the coming uh, years, let's say the next three to five years, uh, is is it going to be gold-backed or is it going to be some type of a basket of currencies that each of the currencies has some type of backing to a commodity, whether it's oil or gold or it, or silver or some other precious metal? Yeah, I, I do. I think ultimately, um, given the amount of, of, of money or, or, or fiat currency, should I say, that is being printed, that ultimately it's going to lead to huge inflation. Um, from my perspective, um, I'm, I'm, I actually studied history and I studied a lot of monetary history. Uh, and if you look at history and, and, and include more recent history, but my perspective.